uh, some arrangement here. All the paper, right, the midterm paper should be presented uh, within this two weeks. The first, uh, the first will be dated November 21st. There are two papers. The first two papers, okay? And uh, the other two papers will be presented uh, on, on November 28th. So, that it? Yeah. The first two papers, okay? This is the meat. Uh, oh, this is uh, the meat and for the meat and uh, paper presentation. And the final is the project presentation. Project presentation. However, for this uh, final final uh, project presentation, all the date, not uh, this date, uh, December December twelfth is only for the early living student. Okay, so all the other students who want to stay longer, you can present the, the final project in January. Okay, in January, got it? Okay, okay. Yeah, now let's talk about expatriation. Expatriation. Okay. This uh, international Chinese and uh, local national. Yeah. Friend, uh, parent country national are transferred to another country to work in a foreign subsidiary or other type of operation uh, of the MAE for more than one year. They are generally referred to as the expatriate or international dining. And when they return home, they are referred to the repatriate. Now you got the expatriate and repatriate. Okay. In general, this purpose can be combined into two broad categories. The first is the demand driven. The second is the running driven. When a major company want to uh, set up a foreign subsidiary, uh, he need to assign uh, uh, the subsidiary CEO or a professional, engineer, manager, right from the home country. Okay, so this is the demand driven purpose, right? This includes using the internet dining as the general manager, director for a subsidiary startup and to roll out new product and for technology transfer, right? And solve problem or perform function tasks such as accounting, sales and manufacturing and for organizational control, right? Yeah, so this is the first category of the expatriation yeah for the demand driven because you need to transfer technology transfer the management know-how transfer this uh, organizational culture from the home country from the headquarters to the foreign subsidiary the second type is the learning driven purpose this includes the management development transfer of knowledge and the socialization of rock, local uh, into the corporate culture and value. Okay. So after you set up your uh, foreign subsidiary yeah. and when it go and become mature, more mature, then you would like to uh, promote the local talent to become right the upper level manager then you can transfer this uh, local talent uh, to your headquarter right to headquarter or you want to develop your home country's um, talent 
to become the global talent, you can uh, assign them, right, to work for one or two years in a foreign subsidiary. Let him learn the, and gather international experience, right? So, yeah, I, some students come from my global talent center, right? Yeah, one of the students, uh, uh, he uh, was assigned to have internship in China, in China. And when he come back this week, he asked me whether he can stay in that internship company or not. Or he should come back here to have another turn of the training, right? And then go to Shanghai. There is another company who want to hire him. Okay. So, yeah, in my opinion, I will uh, provide him this learning, the learning need, right? Learning need. Because he, he just got his uh, master's degree, right? And come to my global talent center. Okay. So, learning is very important. Learning. Uh, uh, you know, my, my son uh, has arrived in uh, Dubai and so oh, it's hot, you know? Hot and hot. <laughs> you know, a hot job, a hot weather. Okay. And I, I tell him, learning. Learning is very important. Learning. Right. When you were, were assigned to work, in a foreign country, learning, because you are so young, right? When HGM, host country national, host country national are relocated to the headquarters of the parent firm, they are generally referred to as impatriate, impatriate, right? And when the ME hire a citizen of a country other than the parent country or the country of the subject to work in one of its foreign subsidiary. This person had been typically referred to as a third, third country national, TCN. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, that's my son's situation, right? He's a Canadian, right? right. And was assigned to, right? Uh, to walk, uh, to walk in Dubai. Uh, act as the managing director in the CEO office, right? And this this uh, company is a China uh, biotech company. So <laughs> he's the TCN, right? He's the TCN, right? And there are many different options available to MES, uh, local high or national. Right? Work local high. Yeah. Many times uh, uh, young uh, uh, young uh, in, uh, I will have young talent, right? They find a job in China. But uh, but the modern company or China company or Chinese company they want to use the local high. Not transfer them from Taiwan and work there. They will pay more, right? No. He said, you should come to Shanghai and become the local high. So they pay them at the local level. Local level. <laughs> so, you know, that's local level. Uh, for, M for MBA student, international level, uh, it cost uh, 12,000 MB every month. 12,000 MB. But for the local, right? The local high. Only 8,000 MB monthly. Right? And month. You had the experience there, right? Only 8,000 for MBA. The new MBA. However, if the international, well, okay, higher, right? More than the 12,000, that may 
Nabi Al-Mal yeah. uh, There are many uh, different type of uh, expatriate the domestic uh, internationalist, right? Employee who never leave home but conduct international business with customers, suppliers, and colleagues in other countries. Okay? It's just work in uh, the home country's headquarters, right? And managing the international business. International commuters, employees who live in one country but who work in another country. Okay? Like the the Hong Kong people and you know, commute they commute across border and work in Shenzhen only 40 minutes from Hong Kong to Shenzhen right across the border yeah. these are international commuters or in Canada right, right. Canada from Vancouver from Vancouver to Seattle, two hour, two hour drive. Okay. Frequent business trip usually include travel to a variety of a country or con con continent to visit any site or customer. Uh, many Taiwanese high tech company uh, executive, right? The executive in this uh, high tech company, they need to travel frequent business travel. To contact the global customer, okay. To which the sub international supplier, supplier, okay. Short-term international journey, yeah. That less than one year, but more than a few weeks. Uh, one year. Yeah. So now, uh, more and um, cold. Uh, now the China and Taiwan become more integrate, integrated in terms of the economy development. So more and more uh, manager will be assigned to have a shortened task, right? Shortened task. International Azani lasts more than one year and include full uh, relocation. Localized employee this normally refers to the situation where an employee is sent to work in a foreign country but hired as a local employee. An international designee who is converted to a permanent local status uh, once the assignment period is over. Many Taiwanese high tech company, China high tech company, they will set up the uh, subsidiary in Silicon Valley, in USA, and assign their a senior manager or a CEO, right, work in USA, right, and then they become this uh, localized employee. After a period of time, or their family, right, uh, live there, and then this one got the PR, got the PR, and become the localized. Okay. Many Chinese, uh, Chinese manager, Taiwanese manager, Korean manager, yeah, they become this localized employee in USA. Even if you want to work in Taiwan, <laughs> maybe, right? After a period of time, you become the localized employee. <laughs> Permanent head of corporate who spend essential, essentially their whole career in international environment, moving from one loc locale to another. Okay. Uh, uh, I will introduce some internship, temporary immigrant. These are workers brought into a friend's home country to work for short, right? Yeah. So maybe uh, uh, <coughs> some international, uh, some international uh, from IB degree or uh, no uh, IB degree program. Uh, they asked me to find this internship for them in China, in China. Uh, and after they got a degree, this China company were high, were high. Right. So some uh, Russia student, some <coughs> East Europe student, yeah, they work in China. <coughs> 
out of this internship. And that semester, I introduced uh, two students, uh, Indonesian children, to have internship in Taiwan, in Taiwan. And yeah, <laughs> this company went to hire them. <laughs> and still, the company asked me for any mainland Indonesia student. <laughs> Yeah, now they want to expand the market in Indonesia, in mainland. So they want to hire the MBA student, right? MBA student who know Taiwanese, <coughs> speak Chinese, right? And yeah, and English, right? So they can work for this company in his home country. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to introduce too, too many uh, types. So technology was made it possible to conduct global business in new way. Firms are more likely to use domestic internationalists, virtual assignment and cross border team, returning and a second generation expatriate and outsource offshore and just in time international employee. Because this the the long term expatriation cost more right so all this uh, become uh, more available the problem with the high cost of traditional expatriate retention of repatriate and increasing resistance from employees and their family to foreign assignment continue to go uh, unresolved so firm rely more heavily on short-term assignment extended ministry commuter local high returnee and retiree okay uh, now let's talk about the uh, uh, staffing choice, right? In creation for the MB. Uh, it's ITM that should be tasked with providing the expertise and support to the rest of the firm to ensure that all these variety of global manager and employee develop the necessary international competence. No matter what type of the expatriation, ITM people need to provide to develop all these expatriate manager, this uh, talent become the global talent and learn the international competence. Okay. <coughs> yeah, let me talk about how to uh, select. Yeah, I will I use this. How to select the expatriate manager. Okay. First, you need to analyze the job, right? The job requirement. Technical requirement, if we uh, went to the foreign subsidiary, act as the R&D professional, right? Engineer professional, yeah. Or managerial responsibility, or he act as the CEO executive in the foreign subsidiary. And you should know the cultural requirement, very uh, great cultural differences between home country and the host country, okay? And you should as understand of the country assignment, okay? This, uh, whether this assignment is a great value, yeah, very important to learn, learn the experience there. The political, legal, social, economic situation, whether there are some risk, a risk or great differences in this uh, institutional context. Okay, so and you should know the social institution. Any, for example, any university, any uh, 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 hospital, or you no, know, for the for the expatriate managers need. Okay. And the standard of living, yeah. Shanghai will be right more uh, convenient, right? Then Queensland uh, uh, or then other city, okay. Physical environment, okay. The shopping mall, you know, many in the major like to work in Singapore, Hong Kong, right? Because the this uh, physical environment whether it's okay or not. But if you want to transfer to Japan, <laughs> what problem come up to you? Japan? How about the earthquake? 
how about a tsunami? You know, maybe how about a nuclear? Uh, okay. And then, now you need to evaluate, evaluate the candidate, right? You need to evaluate uh, availability, job ability, personality. Personality very important, right? If you are uh, uh, a narrow mindset, okay, not good. Career status, okay, desire for assignment, family situation, whether they can uh, uh, cooperate with this expatriation, and the gender, uh, the language skill, prior experience, okay, and then you should prepare it, prepare the candidate and their family, okay, pre assignment, site visit provide this uh, short-term uh, visit, okay? And the uh, job country orientation, uh, cultural orientation, language training, commission and benefit tax, housing, counseling, and uh, counseling by uh, repatriate, local sponsorship. Okay, and adequate, this is very important, right? Very important, yeah. Adequate length of assignment. Yeah, whether it's the adequate uh, for this uh, candidate, right? To learn, to learn more, right? Or to to complete, to complete his task. <laughs> Repatriation preparation, yeah, very important. Uh, nobody expect he and go and cannot <laughs> return. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, sponsor back home, career uh, counseling, and the cultural reorientation. Okay, and then the successful uh, expansion, experience. So now please come to uh, this uh, question. This uh, question. Look here. Now, if you are given a p opportunity in your next job. To go on and extend it for in us. Sorry. No, I will change. <laughs> I change. You are given opportunity to work in China, right? In your next job. To work in China. What type of support program would you expect or ask for from IHR? No? Now, yeah, you will be a uh, Assign, yeah, no matter internship or no matter the short term or more than one year expatriation. Okay, what type of support program would you expect or ask for? Huh? What idea come up to you? Okay, uh, don't say, oh, Yo, you go. Yes, <laughs> so, so brave. <laughs> So, okay, what kind, what type of support program you expect, ask for, from the company, okay? Yeah, so please uh, uh, come back 11.10, 11.10, it's okay? Right? 11.10, okay? 11.10, and prepare your uh, presentation. China. If, if 